What's the video we're doing today? Oh yeah, pros and cons of remote work. In Discord and in a lot of places, all I hear about is people wanting remote jobs, but I don't think they understand the pros and cons of a remote job. They just look at these pros that look really fun, like the fact that you can work at home and play with your dog and have all the food and coffee that you want and be in your own comfort of your underwear while you're writing some code or editing a video or whatever you do. It's not easy, it's hard. You need good discipline to make sure that you don't sit and do half-ass work from eight in the morning till eight at night. You wanna get that work done in four to six hours, eight hours, whatever you need, and then go and enjoy your leisure time. It's often really hard with remote work to separate the two, to separate work from pleasure because you're doing both in the same place. There's not much physical interaction to actually change the environment other than you closing the browser on something that you were doing for work and opening up Netflix or going to the kitchen to make some food or, you know, there's not much separation from work to pleasure. Some of the pros is you can work from anywhere with an internet connection. That means you could be in an airport in every single city in the world every day and you could be working from there if that's what you wanted to do. As long as you can push your code or post your videos, send it to your client, whatever you're doing, and communicate with your team if you're working for a company, then you're good. One thing that can be a pro or a con, I'm going to take it as a pro, is you do get isolation from the other employees. I don't want to hear about your cat's birthday party, I just want to get my code done or edit my video or whatever I'm doing and get on with it and go home and enjoy my time. It's a lot more comfortable, you know, you can invest in a nice chair in your home office, you got your nice computer monitors, your nice keyboard, all your nice things and you go to work and they give you the generic cheap mouse that always breaks and you always have to take it to tech support and wait for a new one. There's always some issues, so here you know you have full control and you're investing in your home which you can be using for other things as well. So if you get a really nice computer, you can use that for games when you're done working. There's no need to spend money or time on transportation. That time you spend on transportation to go to work every day, you could spend driving every day to somewhere beautiful with an internet connection where you can go and do your work. Often there's a lot of flexibility for remote workers. They really trust you to get the job done and they're not on your ass micromanaging you, making sure that every minute you're doing the right thing. They're more like, hey, by the end of the day, you need to get this ticket done and if it takes you an hour, that's fine. If it takes you 10 hours, that's fine. We need it done. So those are the cons. I'm sure I missed a couple, and if I did, please let me know, because I'm actually really curious, maybe things I don't realize when I work remote. I think that's all the pros. That's everything I could think of, but if you have any that you think that I forgot about or something that's important, please let me know in the comments. I'm actually really curious, because I work from home. So let's go with the cons. The biggest one for me is communication. It's the biggest problem I had in office and then even a bigger problem I had out of office because out of office, you don't have someone in front of you where you can bug them if they don't respond to you in Slack or something. If they decide that they're busy or they want to slack off and they close Slack, you have absolutely no way of communicating with them and it kills your day, it puts you in a bad mood and it's just not fun. And you can do the same to others, so it's really hard to get good communication between people who don't often work at the same time or work well together. I think that's one of the biggest reasons why it's really hard to get a remote job. They're looking for reliable people that they can trust from day one because you're not actually there. They're paying you money without even getting in to meet you in person, so it's pretty tough. That's why a lot of people out there, especially Josh, recommends that you go to a company who doesn't offer a remote and then try and get half remote, half in office, and slowly take that out to remote. For some of you, this might be a con. For me, it's a pro. There's no human interaction, so I'm gonna put it down as a con just because you don't actually get any social skills. You're just kind of locked in your room working all day, and then you know, you're done working and you stay in your room and play games or watch a movie or whatever, so you're pretty much always in your room or always in your house or, you know, you're not often being pushed out to other places. You don't really have a reason to go to the coffee shop at the bottom of your work building because your work building is your room and right next to it you have a coffee machine. It's really hard to switch between leisure and work, you know? One second you're, you're doing something that you enjoy, then the other second you're doing work and you're back and forth and it's a problem I've run to a lot where Let's say I play a game and it'll be really late so I'll just leave my computer open with the game open and I'll wake up in the morning and the game will be there and I'll be like, you know what, I'll play around and then two hours later I realized I haven't done any work and it's already 10am. Even though there are distractions like that at work, 
The distractions at home I find are a lot more interesting because you've placed them there. So for me, I'm just working and then my dog comes with the ball and drops it on my lap and starts barking in my face until I throw it. And then I throw it and I hope that she just stays in another room and plays with herself, plays with the toys that I got her and then she knows she comes back here, drops the ball in my lap and repeats 150 times. So I have to take her out, play with her, tire her out, get her to sleep come back to work and repeat the process throughout the day and it gets pretty annoying and pretty frustrating. Especially when you're in that moment of flow where you're working really well and then you get a dog sticking their slobbery ball in your face. There's also, you know, the TV and the couch. You might take your laptop and be like, you know what, I'll lie down on the couch and work because I can. And then you fall asleep and you haven't done any work because you've slept for three hours and now it's late so you're gonna work through the night and now you've killed your whole day. Also food, a lot of us are nervous eaters. When we stress, we go and eat. So you know, you're working on some code or you're editing a video and you're not sure if the client's gonna like it. So you go up and to get something from the fridge and you end up going up 25 times because you just keep getting in these stressful moments and you're gonna stress eat your way out of it. One of the cons is that you don't get the benefits that you would get if you're in an office. So usually they have like free coffee, the happy hour where you get beers, food on location, you know, a bunch of these things that you're not going to get at home. But there are a lot of benefits for remote workers. A lot of companies will support you with tech that you need to get started. But that's where it gets tricky and I'm not sure exactly how it works. Like if you were to write a program on your home office, which is also given to you by your work and then that app makes a million dollars and now your company is like, hey, you made that on our equipment. I'm not we actually own the right. I'm not sure how that works legally, but just be careful. Pretty much to work remote, you do have to be disciplined. You gotta have a structure. You gotta be organized. These are things that I still struggle with, but if anyone's interested, maybe I could do something on that. The tools I use and what I do. I'm right here, I have Notion open up next to me and that's why I keep looking. I usually write a lot of notes in there. I have like a Trello board in there. I have all my videos in there. Everything is planned and ready to go. If this video was helpful, feel free to like the video. It really supports me. It pushes my video into the YouTube algorithm and then I get more subscribers and then I can make even cooler videos. Also, if you're trying to become a developer, you're trying to learn front end or back end, you're not sure what tools you should learn, I have two roadmaps on the Grind Reel store. I'm gonna put the links below. I also have some courses on grindreel.academy that I've been working on, and that's why I've been gone for the past week and a half on YouTube. I kind of had to pause YouTube, work on a course, and now I'm back. If you want to learn some video editing stuff or you just want to see me struggle, you can hop into my stream. I'm always editing some random clips from the internet that people send me and we're trying to make them look really good. I hope this video served its purpose of helping you and I'm going to see you guys in the next one.